to start off, shout out to the sponsor of this video, SeatGeek. Because of them, I can afford to go and get a haircut after this video, which is great because without SeatGeek, my hair would wind up looking like OS ends, which would just be a complete tragedy. Anyways, I'm sure you guys all know about the app by now. It is the best app for anyone looking to get tickets to a basketball game or any other live event in general. It's on top of being able to get a view from the seats before you buy them, as well as already getting great prices, you also get an additional $20 off when you enter the promo code SDC for your first order. I'll have the links down in the description box below so you can go download the app. Yo, what is up guys? It's me, Zach Lee, and LeBron James does a heck of a job, a phenomenal job when it comes to playing dumb in front of the media, pretending as if he can't make whatever he wants to happen in the league happen, pretending as if half of the league wouldn't disappear with a snap of his finger. And he just did it with the Phoenix Suns a couple of weeks ago. He was like, you know what? We could use another center on our team. Phoenix, y'all got Tyson Chandler. Release him so he can come here and help us win some games. And the Suns did it without asking a single question. LeBron James in front of the media acts like he has no pull with the organization he's on or with any other team in the league when we all know that he does. He's the commissioner. And yesterday, LeBron James continued to do this as after the Lakers lost to the Magic, more on that later in the video, LeBron James was asked if he thinks it's possible for the Lakers to go after Carmelo Anthony. And this was his response. Carmelo and Lakers, is it possible? Huh? Carmelo and Lakers, thoughts? Is it possible? Um, I have no idea, to be honest. That's not um, a question to ask me. Um, right now, we don't... And we have 15 roster spots, right? We don't even have a roster spot open right now, so um, that's a that's not a question for myself. Let me translate that for you guys real quick. Essentially, what LeBron James said was, Carmelo Anthony, that's my brother right there. That's one of my best friends in the league. But now we good. Seriously though, I still find it very interesting how guys like LeBron James and Dwayne Wade, who are supposedly really good friends with Carmelo Anthony off the court, and always come to Carmelo Anthony's defense whenever the media or other players or coaches or whoever it is, fans are bagging on him for not being able to contribute to a winning system, they come to his defense then, but whenever they have a chance or the opportunity to add him to their roster, they just look the other way. Next up, and this one, this one is really, really strange and maybe a reason to be a bit concerned if you are a Lakers fan. As we got reports out yesterday saying that Lonzo Ball likes to be dominated verbally by his teammates, more specifically by Rajon Rondo. Yeah, he'll try and get into me. Just stuff to try and get me going. He talks a bunch of trash and practice all the time, which makes me get pretty mad. I told him my whole life I respond to getting yelled at by the coach, so that's how I respond. If you see stuff, just yell at me. I'll tune into it. That's how he tries to help me out. I got some serious, serious jokes that I want to be able to say about this, but if I said them, this channel would get demonetized in a heartbeat. So I'll just leave it at this. There's something that we don't know about Lonzo Ball. Anyways, this whole thing is really starting to make me doubt as to whether or not Lonzo Ball can become the guy that the Lakers thought they were getting, can become a leader in the face of the franchise. First of all, why on earth, Lonzo Ball, do you need more motivation to go out there and try on the basketball court other than the motivation that should come from just wanting to be a great player, wanting to go out there and get wins and help this Lakers team get better. Why do you need to be yelled at to get motivated to play well? How are you going to be a professional basketball player that can't get motivated to play basketball games? A guy like that cannot be a leader. He can't be the guy that the Lakers franchise and Lakers fans thought they were getting back in June of 2017 when they drafted him. Because what face of the franchise player or what leader do you guys know that needs other guys to get in his face and call him trash in order to get him motivated to go out there and try and lead a team? You don't know anyone else. You probably don't even know a single other player in the NBA that needs to have that type of motivation. Next up though, DeAndre Ayn. He's been really good for a rookie so far this year, except, of course, he's on the Phoenix Sun. Luka Doncic, he has been amazing, phenomenal. Trey Young is proving people wrong. Jaren Jackson Jr., the guy that no one talks about, he's been amazing too. Mo Bamba, 
probably would be very good if it wasn't on the magic and overall just most of the rookies from this year's draft class have lived up to or even exceeded our expectations of them so far this year but what about marvin bagley the number two overall pick from last year's draft class or this year's draft class you don't really hear too much about marvin bagley and that's despite the fact the kings have gotten off to a pretty solid start so far and it's not like marvin bagley has been bad at all he's been decent when he actually gets to play averaging a little over 11 points per game as well as over five rebounds per game he hasn't been bad whatsoever it's just that he doesn't get many minutes which is a surprise to me as well as a lot of other fans since we thought marvin bagley got drafted by the kings there's no way that he shouldn't be starting getting all of the minutes that he can handle because he's on the sacramento kings come on now it's not like it's hard to get minutes on the sacramento Kings. however so far this year he has been coming off the bench in favor of the veteran billy Sum, who is 30 years old and that is what has the king's management and ownership so upset with the head coach dave Jaeger. Uh, check out these two reports. Jaeger's handling of 2018 number two overall pick Marvin Bagley could eventually lead to the coach's dismissal. The front office views the season as a development year, but it was still confident that the team would be competitive and grow with Bagley, promising guard the Aaron Fox and forward Harry Giles and Scalabese Eric, getting meaningful minutes. Now, to me personally, I'm not too sure how I feel about this because with Bagley coming off the bench, the Kings have been off to a really good start to their season. They're now eight and eight on the year, the best start they've had in quite some time and i can see what dave yeager is trying to do here he's trying to bring marvin bagley along slowly and he's also one of those coaches that gives minutes based on his trust level he doesn't really trust rookies as much as he does veterans and bagley not even having 20 games under his belt yet yeager doesn't trust him too much like i said the kings have been winning so far so he's just going with what's been working and the lineup they've used has been working i think that's the mindset of dave yeager however the kings are like what on earth are you doing first off get bagley into that starting lineup and give him 30 to 35 minutes per game asap that kid's a huge part of this team's future and the more you play him the faster he's going to develop we need to develop him as fast as we possibly can because the reality of the situation is even though the kings are off to an impressive start we all know they're not making the playoffs sure they might win close to 40 or even 40 41 42 games this year that's not gonna get him to the playoffs in the western conference so why not play marvin bagley and for all of you thinking well well, maybe the Kings just want to tank the season and lose as many games as possible and that's why they're saying this that's not the case that can't be the case because the Kings don't even have their first round draft pick this year that goes to the Boston Celtics so the Kings have no incentive to lose a lot of games if anything they'll just be helping out the Boston Celtics and the last thing they should want or any other team in this league should want to see is the Boston Celtics get another top pick in this year's draft that does it for the news though so now let's take a quick look at the games from last night I almost recorded a video last night strictly ranting about about Kemba Walker and the Charlotte Hornets because out of all the players in the league he is the one that desperately needs the most help we can talk about Anthony Davis but at least he has some help and Drew Holiday Julius Randle Nikola Mirotic even Etwan Moore would be considered massive help for Kemba Walker but Kemba Walker literally has no one he scored 60 points yesterday and the Hornets still lost to the philadelphia 76ers 60 points for kemba walker that's more than the rest of the hornets had combined as a team and i don't even want to talk about this game anymore that's how upset it's making me that walker is on the hornet such a massive ways of talent as for the Sixers though Jimmy Butler was great down the stretch in this game as he recorded the potentially game saving block on Kemba Walker and then hit a three with less than a second to go to give Philly the 122 to 119 overtime win and the Los Angeles Lakers had their four game winning streak snapped by the Orlando Magic yesterday or as Orlando pulled away in the second half to get the 130 to 117 win big booch continues to shine for Orlando with 36 points and 13 rebounds part of that might be due to the fact that LA at times was trying to run kuzma at the five to defend him and that wasn't a very good idea also lonzo i don't think rondo yelled at him enough last night because he was just all around terrible i mitchell responded brilliantly to his previous game where he took 35 shots and didn't log a single assist as yesterday the man was nearly perfect scoring 28 points to go along with six assists as the jazz get that 98 to 86 win over boston speaking of the warriors though they lost once again this time to the dallas mavericks as the rookie luka Doncic came up clutch to get dallas a 112 to 109 win Doncic finished the game with 24 points and nine rebounds no Kawhi Leonard for toronto in this one as the raptors are still sitting about on back-to-back -back nights but they were playing against the bulls 
Bulls who were without Zach Levine. And if you thought the Bulls were bad before, then you haven't seen anything until you've seen the Bulls play without Zach Levine. They reached a new level of bad. They got buried by Toronto, 122 to 83. Anthony Davis is on another one of his tears again. So any teams playing against the Pelicans in the near future had better watch out because this guy is on another level at the moment. Back to back 40 point games for AD as his 40 points, eight rebounds and eight assists got the Pelicans their fifth win in their last six games, 125 to 115 over the Nuggets. And would you look at that, all of a sudden after their 0-4 start of the season, the Thunder are now tied for the second best record in the Western Conference. As with their 110 to 100 win over the Suns yesterday, they advanced to 10 and five on the year. Most of those wins coming without Westbrook, which is also really impressive. Paul George though, has done a great job leading this team as of late, as he had his third game in a row with at least 30 points last night with 32 points and 11 rebounds. And the Rockets win their third game in a row without Carmelo Anthony. And this is the game they most look like the Rockets from last year, as their offense was flowing much better while at the same time they kept their defensive intensity, 132 to 112 the final score. James Harden with 34 points and eight assists on the night. The Los Angeles Clippers continue to remain in impressive on the season as well as they are another one of those teams that's tied for the second seed in the Western Conference. They won again this time 127 to 119 over the Nets. Danilo Gallinari and Tobias Harris are both amazing combining for 55 points of the night. And with Victor Oladipo sitting out all but five minutes in this game with the sore knee, the rookie Aaron Holiday stepped a big time off the bench in his 15 minutes scoring 12 points on four of six shooting. He has a really promising future and his performance down the stretch was enough for the Pacers to get the 97 to 89 win over Atlanta. And and that is going to bring us to today's player of the day where you guys have the opportunity to vote for who you think was the best player in the league last night by clicking the little eye icon in the top right hand corner of the video just remember though that only players whose team won are eligible to win player of the day i'm so sorry Kemba Walker. Anyways, yesterday you guys selected Anthony Davis and his 43 points, 17 rebounds, and 6 assists as your player of the day. That does it for today's video though. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, go ahead and subscribe to the channel with post notifications turned on so you can stay up to date with everything that goes on in the NBA on a daily basis. Thank you once again for watching though. You guys already know that you are the real MVPs, but until tomorrow, I am out of here. Peace!